I've got the um, cutoff tool lined up so it's square with the chuck and it's sticking out just far enough to uh, hit the center of this so it's sticking out the minimum amount I'm going to put some oil on this and I'll probably stop this every once in a while or oil it as I go along here okay here we go this is the hardest part for me Since I was having so much trouble getting that uh, cut started, I uh, played around with the speeds and so forth a little bit and went ahead and did it off camera. So I have it cut off. It's left a little flange on the back here that I'll have to sand or a file off. But at least it's cut off now. I can go to the next operation after I take this burr off. Okay, I'm just going to file this on a file and take that thin burr off. can tell the sound changed as soon as it cut it off. Okay, that part's done. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, drill a hole in the side here for the set screw. So I'm going to just take the center punch and mark a spot in the center of that flat spot. And um, a 632 screw calls for a 107 drill. I've got a 106. That should be close enough. trick is to get this thing lined up just perfect. There. Now the next setup I'm going to have to do for the holes on this beveled part is I'm going to have to tilt this at a 45 degree and mark off the four holes. It's not going to be super accurate, but I'll have it approximately correct. I've gone ahead and marked, I don't know if you can see those marks on there, but I've marked the four locations and they're approximate well they're not quite 45 degrees off from that hole maybe I'll remark them so I'm at 45 degrees off from this hole so let me go back and do that correct that I've corrected the the marks on here so that they're 45 degrees off from this hole that I'm gonna have for the set screw and I've gone ahead and set up this table at 45 degrees so it will drill in perpendicular to this face so all I have to do now is line up each each line at the proper place and drill down through it.
gets right in the center. Tap the screw holes. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, knock off the corners on this so it's not quite so sharp. Okay, I'll get out the 632 tap and tap those holes now. I always put a little bit of oil on these taps and then try to keep it as straight up and down and perpendicular to the surface as possible. Aluminum is fairly soft, but it will gall. And normally I'll go in a little bit and then back up just to break off the chips. And do it very carefully. <clears throat> On harder material you can break off these taps pretty easily, even in aluminum you could. Or if you push it to the side rather than straight up and down, you can break them off and then it's a real pain to get it back out of there. And right now I didn't go all the way through, I'm cleaning it off because I feel it sticking a little bit and I want to make sure that I get those chips out of there. There, went through. Yeah, that's the location for the set screw. It'll fit in there like that. Now I have to tap the the holes for the radials. I'm going to turn this a little bit so it's facing me a little bit better.
I'm going to back this out and raise this thing up a little bit. I don't want to hit the uh, this rubber jaw on the other side. Okay, there's one hole, three more to go. I'll go ahead and finish the other three off camera. I finished tapping the holes on all four of the holes there plus the um, set screw. Here's the set screw. Let's try it out on one of the antennas I already built. So that'll fit like that. Screw in the radials and we have an antenna. So the next thing to do is to build an antenna radiating element and the four ground radials. This one is for 220 and I'm gonna make one for the 70 centimeter band, 440 band, so it'll be shorter than this one. 